The Invention of Hugo Cabret, Part 2, Chapter 9, The Ghost in the Station. Hugo put on his shoes and raced through the rain back to the train station, which was still crowded with travelers. He had no idea how he was going to manage it, but he couldn't wait to bring the automaton to Georges Méliès. He shook himself dry like a dog and sprinted across the crowded halls, excitement coursing through his body. His hand was hurting, and he knew it was going to be hard to carry the automaton back to the old man, so he stopped at the cafe to get some ice, making sure no one was watching. He grabbed a handful, as well as another bottle of milk. The newspaper vendor was talking with the owner of the cafe. I don't believe it here. Are you sure this is true, Madame Emile? said the newspaper man. Yes, Monsieur Frick, she answered. My friend cleans the police station and she overhears a lot. I saw her on my way to work this morning. She told me that the police found a body at the bottom of the Seine a few days ago. Hugo wanted to leave, but there was something about the woman's tone that made him stay. He crouched by the side of the cafe. No one knows about this yet, but they will, continued Madame Emile. The river was being dredged and they found the body of a man down there. He'd been at the bottom of the river for a very long time, years maybe. My friend said that last night they finally figured out who it was and they were only able to identify him by the silver flask clinging to an inside pocket. It took them a while to clean it off and read the name inscribed on the bottom. Guess who it turned out to be? Hugo already knew the answer. Remember the drunken old timekeeper of the station, continued Madame Emile. It was him, dead for years. Hugo knew she was wrong about that. Uncle Claude could only have been dead for a few months, but he wasn't going to correct her. Oh my, said Monsieur Frick, who was used to being the one who knew things first. Well, I guess nobody seemed to miss him. But don't you see what this means? Madame Emile said. The clocks in the station should have stopped working when he drowned, since no one was taking care of them. But they didn't. They kept running perfectly. The timekeeper was resting comfortably at the bottom of the river. Obviously, he didn't want to be bothered, and his ghost kept the clocks running. But then they went and disturbed him, and haven't you noticed? The clocks are all breaking down. The station is haunted. At that moment, Hugo accidentally dropped the ice and the bottle of the milk, which shattered loudly on the stone floor. As Madame Emile spun around and spotted him, she yelled, My milk! So you're the one who's been stealing from me. Hugo ran into the crowds as quickly as he could and disappeared into the walls, his head still reeling from what he had just heard. Back in his room, he took a few minutes to catch his breath. Then, because he had to get back to Isabel's house as quickly as possible, he moved all the boxes away from the automaton's hiding place. He dragged the machine into the room and walked around it a few times, trying to figure out the best way to lift it up with his injured hand. Finally, he made sure it was completely covered with the fabric so it would be protected from the rain, and then he leaned the mechanical man into the crook of his elbow. With his good hand, he managed, with great difficulty, to lift it up. He yelped in pain and staggered toward the door, which out of habit he had closed behind him when he came in. He knew we, he would have put down the manical, mechanical man to open the door. And he was trying to figure out the least painful way to do that when there was a knock. Isabel, Hugo said. With a great deal of force, the door flew open and for a moment all Hugo could see was green. The station inspector burst in like a hurricane, followed immediately by Madame Emile and, and Monsieur Frick. The station inspector grabbed Hugo by the arm. Hugo yelled out, and to his horror, he dropped the mechanical man, which landed on the ground with an awful ringing crash. That's him, yelled Madame Emile. He's been stealing milk and croissants from me for months. I saw the whole thing, cried Monsieur Frick. He's a thief. Thank you both very much. I'm glad you were able to follow the boy. Now, please, I'll take care of things from here. What is this place? asked Monsieur Frick, looking around. It's the timekeeper's apartment, said the station inspector. 
The timekeeper, shrieked Madame Emile. Turning white as ghosts, she and Monsieur Frick ran from the doorway of Hugo's room. The station inspector rolled his eyes and now focused his attention on Hugo, who was writhing in his arms. Stay still, he shouted, but his face changed immediately from anger to confusion when he looked down at the bundle lying on the floor. What is going on here? What is that? Other details about the station inspector, things that Hugo had never noticed before, came into focus. The man had bad teeth. The top part of one of his ears was missing. He smelled slightly of cabbages. The station inspector, not letting go of Hugo, leaned over and moved the fabric until he could see the mechanical man lying on its side, its neck bent backward. What in the world, he said. The station inspector walked around the room, dragging Hugo after him, poking his head into doors and cabinets. At last, he came to the pile of Uncle Claude's unopened paychecks. What has happened to the timekeeper? How did you know about this apartment here in the station and the tunnels in the walls? Where is he? Please, my fingers are broken. Grab my other arm. It hurts too much, Hugo cried. The station inspector saw the bandages and loosened his grip, at which point, like a wild animal, Hugo escaped. crash. Hugo smashed into someone's back, fell to the floor, looked up and saw the hand of the station inspector as it closed in on him. He tried to roll the other way, but he found himself stopped by Madame Emile and Monsieur Frick, who descended on him through the crowd like vultures. They grabbed Hugo roughly and dragged him to his feet. Let me go, cried Hugo. Hot tears welled in his eyes. The station inspector leaned in close to Hugo's face as the cafe owner and the newspaper man held tightly to each arm. The only place you're going is to prison, the in station inspector hissed. That's the end of chapter nine. We'll pick up with chapter 10 next time.